up guys, it's me, Division Leader Dynamic 2839, and today I am bringing the closing to Boss Gaming Network Season 2. Now, uh, because of this, I want to do a specific game, I'm just going to do a special only game. Uh, this game that I want to speak on is called Chrono Trigger. Trigger is revered as being one of the best games to ever release in gaming history. There was a lot of attributes to this game that played a part. Now, first I want to get into the developers for Chrono Trigger. Now, uh, Squaresoft, they were the developers for Chrono Trigger. This is the same Square that's with Square Enix. Now, so Square Enix used to be called Squaresoft and Enix used to be Enix before they merged and became Square Enix. Now, before the merge, we're just talking about Squaresoft. Squaresoft were the guys who were developing the Final Fantasy games back in the early 90s, in the late 80s also. So basically, uh, when Squaresoft wanted to create this game called Chrono Trigger, they went to go look for three developers. And they found three developers that were some of the greatest during his time. And uh, the first one I can think of, his name was Hironobu Sakaguchi. He was the original creator for Final Fantasy. Uh, the second uh, developer, a creator they brought on was uh, Yuji Hori. He was a creator for Dragon Quest, the Dragon Quest series. I did a review on Dragon Quest and a rating in uh, episode 7 of season 2. And uh, lastly, they uh, brought on the developer uh, and creator of uh, Akira Toriyama, the creator of Dragon Ball Z. So, Squaresoft referred to these three uh, individuals, or these three developers, as the Dream Team. So these three individuals were called the Dream Team back then, back in 1995, when, when this all started, was going on. Uh, so uh, these three developers started working on a project together. And the name of this project was called Chrono Trigger.
Now, Chrono Trigger is still revered as being one of the best games ever released in gaming history. This is mainly because of the fact that it brought on so many different options and choices you can make throughout the game, and, and it had over 10 endings. There's 10 endings, but I've heard rumors that there's more than 10 endings. There's good endings, and there's bad endings. And the reason why that is is because the game revolved around time and space. It revolved around time travel and uh, basically trying to change the time path in history so you could change the future. And uh, that's what Chrono Trigger pretty much revolved around was time travel. Um, and this gave the game a lot of uh, replayability because it never was the same way. So you could play it different ways if you wanted to. Um, I've never gotten all 10 endings. I, I believe I've only gotten about maybe four or five endings in Chrono Trigger. Uh, but I think that's all, all, all I really want to do because all the other endings I think are like bad endings. So, you know, the bad endings are like everyone. Actually, no, I did get a bad ending. One ending I did, uh, the actual, well, I'll get into it, uh, the different timelines here now. Um, okay, so Chrono Trigger is about a, a guy named Chrono. And the game starts off, he's living with his mother. He's just a regular boy. You know, he's a, a teenage guy, teenager. Uh, and there's a, 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 basically a town fair going on. So he goes, uh, you know, to the town fair. He leaves home, goes to the fair. And as he's there, uh, he meets um, a lot of different strange people. There's games you can play, you know, little, uh, you know, uh, ways to make little money before the game really starts, you know. And eventually, Chrono makes his way to an area where there's a, a time machine show. Basically, it's like a teleporter at that point. It's not really called a time machine. At that point, it's just a teleporter. But uh, there's a genius girl who lives in his village. Um, her name is Luca. Luca is uh, a super smart uh, uh, young girl who can basically build, like, you know, electronic devices and do whatever. So she created a teleporter. Uh, this teleporter is at the fair. Chrono asks, can he try it? She says, sure, you know. So uh, Chrono gets on the teleporter. She turns it on, it teleports Chrono a few feet away from where he was at. So everyone's like, yeah, it works, it's awesome, cool. Okay, well, okay. Now next, a girl comes up, her name is Marl. Now this is where the game starts to change, okay? So Marl comes up and she's like, hey, I want to try uh, the teleporter too. Everyone's like, sure, go ahead. She gets on to the teleporter, and for some reason or another, she has, she's wearing a pendant, and the pendant malfunctions the actual teleporter and it opens up a, a, a warp hole, a time, a time warp hole, <laughs> and she goes into this time warp hole and disappears. So everyone's like, where did this girl go? Whatever the case may be. Well, come to find out, she wasn't just a normal girl. She was actually the princess of the land. She was actually there under uh, an alias. It wasn't her real name, Marl. Her name is actually Nadia. She's actually the princess of the land. She actually snuck out of the castle, whatever the case may be, to come see the fair. So now she's lost, and everyone's panicking. So Chrono is like, okay... We gotta go after her. So Luca, the genius girl, she turns the teleporter back on uh, after she works on it a while to try and see if she can recreate the time distortion. And she does. And uh, Luca and Chrono go into the time uh, dimension and they go uh, and come out in prehistoric times. So they're back in like 65 million BC, you know, back when like T-Rexes and all those dinosaurs are still running around. So, <laughs> you know, Velociraptors, and uh, you'll see them in the game too as well. It's pretty funny.
like you're, they're like, wait a minute. So where is she? Anyway, they you play that part of the stage. This is when the game starts to pick up. You start to get an idea of what Carnal Trigger is about. You know, you find her, you find uh, Nadia or Marley, find her. You go back to your real time, the present time, and, uh, you know, uh, the game takes off from there. So basically, it goes back and forth between Marl. She runs away from the castle with Chrono and Luca, and they go on this huge time adventure, basically trying to figure out, you know, what's going on with time. Like, what's going on with time and space? Like, why is all these things happening? And I haven't gotten into everything. But the, the main enemy of Chrono Trigger is it's an uh, alien being that basically travels the universe, and what this being does is that he uh, basically soars through space, and he finds planets that he likes, he lands on these planets, and once he's on the planet, he burrows his way into the core of the planet, and he sleeps and feeds on the planet for millions of years. Look and search and find what the next step you have to do, or gather as much information on Lavos, because that was the name of the alien being, the alien being was Lavos. Uh, now, he looks like a bug. He's like, he's big, though. He's like the size of a, of a blue whale. He's huge, but he's like, a, he's like a beetle. You know, he doesn't talk or anything like that. It's just like a big alien life form. It looks like a big insect. And it burrows into the planet, and it basically drains the uh, planet of life and such like that. And then when it wakes up after a few million years, it makes its way back up to the surface of the planet. And then it destroys all the living matter or living creatures, whatever, on that planet. Then it repopulates that planet with its spawn. Or its own kind. And then it leaves that planet and goes to the next one. And it, it just does that over and over and over and over again. Um, but Earth is like where it's at right now. And that's where Chrono Trigger takes place. Now this uh, alien being, or uh, whatever it is, you know, insect alien being, also has the power to create time dimensions. You know, it, it can distort time. It can travel back and forth through time as it pleases. It can do whatever. It's a very powerful uh, alien creature. Let's just put it that way. Um, so uh, basically what Chrono... Luca, Nadia, Marl, you meet a lot of other people along the way, Frog, Robo, uh, Magus, you know, you meet a lot of other people along the way, and uh, all of them have their own, like, you know, storyline you can follow through and learn about them. Uh, some of the characters you don't even have to, like, meet, you can, like, go around them and never even meet them throughout the entire game. So you have a choice factor. The thing about Chrono Trigger is that it gave you a huge choice factor, and this was incredible for a game that came out back in 1995, because, you know, games back in 1995... We're just barely scratching the surface and, you know, still trying to keep people entertained. Like, you know, like, we were playing games like Donkey Kong Country back then, you know. And Donkey Kong Country was good, don't get me wrong. That was a great game on Super Nintendo. But, uh, you know, Chrono Trigger just was above all else back then. It literally just blew everything out of the water. Like, the Dream Team did their thing. <laughs> i got to admit that. And uh, it doesn't surprise me. That you look at the names on the list they put together. It's like, man, these guys are legends even back then. They're legends now. You know, like they still make incredible uh, creativity and material even to this day. So um, you look at uh, this uh, this Chrono Trigger situation, and uh, basically there's good and bad endings. Uh, officially, there's ten endings. Like I said, I think there are like fourteen total. But uh, like I said, the other four are like a myth. You know, uh, I believe uh, if you have mods, you can actually get four extra endings that don't exist on a normal game, or maybe a new game plus. You have to beat the game first and go back in with your armor and weapons. Maybe you can beat levels earlier than expected and maybe get a new ending that way. I think that is one way you can do it. But uh, other than that, uh, the game was awesome. Uh, you uh, Basically, the Earth is destroyed in the year 1999. But that's when levels actually finishes sleep. He rises to the top of the planet, uh, surface of Earth, and then he destroys all the living. <laughs>
And then it fast forwards to the year 2300. In the year 2300, there's only a small population of humans still surviving. And uh, artificial intelligence has taken over the planet. And their main goal is to uh, basically exterminate any remaining humans that are left on planet Earth. Uh, what happens at this point is that uh, you eventually do make it to the year 2300 after you, and that's how you find out Lavos destroyed the Earth in 1999. Because when you get to the year 2300, you find a computer with a video recording, you turn it on, and then you watch what happened. You watch Lavos come up and destroy the actual Earth. And that's why you're in the year 2300, everything looks desolate, everything's destroyed, and there's like no people around, except for these like crazy robots trying to kill everybody. So, you know, you're fighting robots in one part of the game, just like artificial intelligence, and they have a boss, and it's like a mother brain AI you gotta go against, it's really crazy. But you meet a good robot, uh, he actually joins your team, his name is Robo. Robo's cool, you can actually fight with him, he'll join uh, your party. Uh, really cool part of the game. Then you go to time travel again, and you go to the medieval times where you're fighting like dragons, and it's like knights and shield and sword. And you meet another guy, his name's Frog. And then uh, <laughs> you go to a different time where magic was like really re prevalent in like the time space. And you meet a guy named Magus. You can either kill him or you can befriend him, and he can join your team. And uh, you go back into prehistoric time. You meet a girl named Aya. Aya is like the super strong, like, uh, Neanderthal woman, you know, and she, she's like a uh, fighting, like, you know, reptilian race at that point. It's, it's crazy. The, the game just takes you all over time and just travel back and forth. And uh, the game, 
very challenging, very mysterious. It never really, it wasn't an easy game. It didn't tell you where to go next. So whenever you had to choose a time to go to, you had to pick and choose which time to go to and literally just, you know, look and search and find what the next step you had to do or gather as much information on Lavos because that was the name of the alien being. The alien being was Lavos. fight level several times throughout the game um and at some point chrono even dies you know but you know if you play around with the time machine you can actually go back to the point before he died and you can keep him alive so there's, there, there's there are a lot of choices in the game you know um so uh, the, the, like i said the, the way the game is, is like chrono he starts the game off as like a boy living with his mother by the time chrono trigger ends chrono was a man <laughs> you know like literally like the ending is literally him getting married like the good ending, if you get like the best, the best, best ending you can get in Chrono Trigger out of all the ten endings is that he gets married to the princess and he becomes king of Guardia. You know, so like, you know that that's the ending that everyone would normally go after. But there is an ending where the Earth is destroyed and everyone dies and Lavos wins. <laughs> there, there is a Lavos ending where he wins completely. There's an ending where the reptilians win. You know, back in the prehistoric time, they kill all the humans back then, and the reptilians become a, a very intelligent, you know, resourceful race of reptiles that live in the future. You know, and they have great technology. There's a lot of different endings in Chrono Trigger. Chrono Trigger was amazing. You know, it was a great game. Um, so, what I want to do is, uh, I want to go ahead and give it a rating, and uh, and uh, I want to go ahead and give it something that I think it definitely is worth. Uh, I want to give it a 10 Honestly, because it's just that great of a game, and like, I remember this game back in like 95, and it was ahead of, the t ahead of its time. It's still ahead of its time compared to a lot of games even now. The only difference that a lot of games have over Chrono Trigger nowadays is that the graphics are much better. But when it comes to gameplay, you know, the, the fighting system, the plot, the Cr Chrono Trigger is still one of the best. I mean, you get to a point where you get to know your allies... Chrono gets to know his allies so well that you can start doing double team attacks. So you can basically use two characters at once to attack one enemy. Or you can do a triple team attack. And the, uh, the whole entire team just attacks one enemy, which basically takes more damage and you have a better chance of defeating whatever you're fighting. You
just do a triple team attack because it's one attack all three at the same time. You know, there's special moves. Uh, Chrono has a move called Lumina where he, like, literally levitates off the ground and he, like, uses, like, some moonbeam power or something like that and he lights up the whole entire room and, like, does incredible damage. It's a very powerful attack. Um, and it's called Lumina. And everyone has their own special techniques, you know. Uh, Marl and Nadia, she's good with the crossbow. Uh, Frog, he's good with the swords. You know, Robo, he uses extension of his arms and body parts like a robot would. You know, it's, it's really cool. Magus, he uses magic. You know, he's good at the magic. So uh, there's a lot of different aspects. Uh, Alias, she's good for strength. So her her punches are like, incredibly powerful. So everyone has their little uh, thing that they do to make them stand out for the rest of the team. And everyone uh, works together to make uh, basically uh, an incredible uh, party. So, um, yeah, Chrono Trigger. Uh, I want to go ahead and uh, give Chrono Trigger a rating. So uh, the rating I want to give it is... A 10. <laughs> but I don't think it deserves that. Chrono Trigger was so great that I'm actually going to break the Richter scale on this. I'm going to give Chrono Trigger a 10.5. <laughs> and I, I know I've never done that because that doesn't even exist <laughs> in Boss Gaming rating system. But the game was just that incredible. It was that awesome. You know, uh, I want to give it a 10.5. And the reason why I say that is because the game was a game changer. Definitely. It's still game changing even now. It still holds its weight even to this day. Is this like, what, you know, on a 16-bit console, graphic console, Super Nintendo, Super Famicom? It's just like, wow. You know, it's incredible to see this. And um, also uh, with Chrono Trigger, uh, I want to see them actually do a remake. They're, they're remaking all these great games from the past. And, you know, like Final Fantasy VII, you know, is getting a remake. And, and it looks like a movie compared to, like, the very first one that released back in 1997. You look at the 1997 version of Final Fantasy VII. And look at the one they're bringing out in 2020, and it's just like, wow, that's a huge difference. And that was a good game. Final Fantasy VII was awesome. Uh, so they, they're remaking, uh, they already remade Secret of Mana. These games were uh, uh, really good RPGs back then, around the same time, in the mid-90s. Uh, they're remaking uh, Resident Evil 3. You know, Resident Evil 2 has already been remade. You see that. Um, they're remaking a lot of games right now. And... Uh, I'm just impressed with all these remakes uh, from these uh, great games from back in the 90s. And, uh, you know, it's just like they're making all these great games, remaking all these great games. And it's like, how do you guys not mention Chrono Trigger? <laughs> it's like, really? <laughs> like, that literally was like the best game of all time, especially back in the 90s. I don't think nothing really topped Chrono Trigger. It's like, if anything, they should be building another dream team and putting one together for the PS4 or like... They, they should probably even put it on a PS5 or something. I mean, no one's talking about that. I just find that funny. They, they remade Chrono Trigger a few times. Um, I think it was remade one time on PS1. And, but uh, it just was the same game, really. I mean, they didn't really change anything. They just added, like, little, like, you know, cutscenes. They, they added, like, anime cutscenes and little movies to it. That was about it, really. But uh, the thing is, uh, the game was still the same, Chrono Trigger, from, like, Super Nintendo. I want to see them remake it, like how they're remaking Final Fantasy VII. I want to see a full remake of, like, Chrono Trigger. Like, <laughs> that'd be awesome. I would definitely pre-order that. I would pre-order that, you know, with the box set and the toy and everything that comes with it. That was just a great game all, all around. So, yeah, 10.5 Chrono Trigger. All right. So, thanks, guys. Thanks for joining me here on uh, Season 2 of Boss Gaming Network. Uh, uh, happy holidays. I know we're coming to an end here shortly. Uh... Basically, uh, we're getting ready for 2020, and we're, when we come back with Season 3 of Boss Gaming Network, we're going to try and do more VR games this time. Uh, I did more VR games in Season 1 than I did in Season 2. Season 2 was just pretty much about like games I liked a lot, you know, and uh, some new titles that had dropped from here and there. You know, It was pretty cool. I, li I liked Season 2. It was good. I had a lot of fun. Uh, 2019 was a good year for gaming. Yeah, so, um, all right, guys. Uh, thanks for joining me here today. Um, also, uh, if you want to head over to the website, www.bossgaming.net, definitely check out the Boss Merch section. Sign up, become a boss. Uh, also, uh, go to our YouTube channel, Boss Gaming Network. Subscribe, comment, let us know what we can do. Send us over some messages or any games you want me to review and rate, and uh, I'll get through that in one of the episodes upcoming. So, definitely. All right, guys. And as always, boss up.